It's a rainy day and I'm stuck indoors, so I'm going to do some science today, or start off a scientific experiment today, based on my Infinite Basil project. Basically it's this perpetual conveyor belt thing. I have a plant of basil, I take cuttings from the plant of basil and root them in water. When they're rooted I pot them up and they grow on. And so I've always got one pot of cuttings rooting, I've got one pot of rooted cuttings growing, and I've got one mature plant that I can harvest for use in the kitchen. And this way I've had a steady supply of basil for almost a year now. I've had this one plant that I've just been continually perpetuating and propagating with cuttings, and it's kept going. There was an interesting situation where this batch of cuttings wasn't rooting, and I think it was because there was a flowering stem in the pot with them. And that's what we're going to test today with an experiment. So I've actually allowed this plant here to bolt, to run to flower. We've got a stem that's forming flowers on it. And I'm going to test if that will prevent other cuttings in the same pot from rooting. I don't actually have enough material for cuttings, so I've bought a new basil plant here. This is not going to contaminate the bloodline, or whatever you want to call it, of the infinite basil experiment. This is going to stay completely unconnected, but I'm going to use this for cuttings for my experiment. And if they root, I'll give them away to someone. So this isn't going to contaminate the whole infinite basil line of propagation. This is just really for the purposes of this experiment. So I've got two little pots, and I'll fill both of those with water. Aluminium foil over the top of both. The foil just helps to prevent evaporation, but also provides some support for the cuttings. And I'm going to try and select pairs of cuttings that are equally matched, so that I've got kind of reasonably well matched control and experiment. I will lose some side shoots from this, and I'll keep those for use in the kitchen today. So nothing's going to waste here. I really don't like waste. Okay, so those two cuttings are pretty much equivalent. So two equal sized batches of cuttings. Plus in one of these sets I'm going to introduce that flowering stem. So that does make a difference to the number of stems that will be in the pots, but in my experience the number of stems that you have in the pot has never influenced the tendency to root. So on the one hand we're going to have three stems to root and one flowering stem. So I've got my three rooting stems there and I'm going to take this quite woody stem here. I will keep the leaves off of that as well because they can all be used for cooking. And this stem here with the flowers forming on it is going to go into the pot alongside the cuttings. In the other pot just three stems to root, no flowers. And we'll see if there's any difference in the tendency of these things to root. Under normal circumstances I would expect all of those to root, regardless of the number of cuttings you put in a pot, I would expect all of those to root within 10 to 14 days. This is one here that I started about 10 days ago, and it is winter so it is rooting slower, but you can just about see roots starting to form in there now. And in a few more days time those will be ready to plant up. So control and experiment, I will label them, although it's going to be fairly obvious because that one's got a flowering stalk in it. We'll see what happens in 10 days to two or three weeks. Okay, at the end of week one, let's have a look and see what's changed. Well, the first thing is that this stem has actually started to produce open flowers. I wasn't sure it was going to because it had got the buds on there for a very long time, but it's actively flowering now. So if there's going to be an effect, I think this is gonna cause it. So. Let's have a look at the control. Right, so we don't have any roots forming yet on the control. Everything's still alive and well, but no signs of roots. So I'll, I'll put that back in a moment. On the experiment batch containing the flowering stem, also no sign of roots. So nothing happening at the moment on either batch. I will wrap these back up again and put them back as they were, and we'll leave it another week and see what happens. Okay, it's been almost exactly a month, about a month and two days, I think, since I started this basil experiment. And so just to recap, 
we've got basil cuttings here in water and we've got basil cuttings here in water identical cuttings as far as I could make them but with the addition of a flowering stem so control and experiment now I have been peeping a little bit and I've seen some roots starting to form so now we're going to have a look and see whether there's any kind of difference between the two before we do that though just want to note that the top growth here on the control these plants here well we'll see it more when we get them out but all three of these cuttings here are taller than the cuttings in the experiment batch which is interesting so in terms of top growth there's more happening on the control without the flowers than there is on the experiment apparently so I've got a bit of purple plastic here which will protect the desk from getting wet but also it's the best color in general and it's a useful color seeing the contrast of green stems and leaves and white roots so hopefully we'll get a good view of what's going on so the experiment batch first i think now all i've done during the time that these have been growing is to keep that water topped up and keep them in more or less the same growing conditions so they've been on a sunny windowsill i've been bringing them inside the house away from the windows at night because it's really quite cold here at nights and that has inhibited the growth. These have taken a lot longer to root than I would have normally expected. But it's the, you know, it's the middle of February. So it is to be expected that growth might be a little bit suppressed. So those are the non-flowering stems from this batch. And you can see there's some little roots starting to form on them. So we can see some tiny, tiny little roots on that one slightly larger roots on those two and then this is the flowering stem which has hardly produced any roots at all but it has got a few roots on there so some roots on the experiment batch now let's have a look at the control batch quite a nice healthy set of roots on that one and bigger leaves Although that might just be cause and effect. Again, a nice healthy root system forming on that one. And then on the third one, yeah, maybe not quite so good, but still a decent amount of roots throughout the stem. Well, you can see that the control batch definitely has larger leaves. Has larger leaves and longer top growth. So what we've got here, let's just go for the best one of those and the best of those and there's a, at least a centimeter more probably two centimeters of extra top growth on the control batch that wasn't exposed to the flowers so the best roots on this one versus the worst roots on this one yeah a little bit better i would say but i think in general i think it's fair to say that we've got better and more luxuriant root formation on the control batch that didn't have the flowering stem in it than we have got on the experiment batch. Now, this is a tiny experiment. This is not conclusive. This is barely science. But what we have got here is a result that kind of slightly confirms the notion that flowering stems might produce something that suppresses root formation. And what's interesting is that it didn't just appear to suppress root formation on its own stem, it appeared to affect everything else that was in the same water as it, which supports the notion, albeit somewhat weakly, that there is some kind of hormone or something being produced by this rooting stem, and it's coming down the stem and into the water, and it's then suppressing the formation of roots on these other plants. I mean, another way to think about this is the cuttings in the same pot of water behave almost as if they're part of the same plant. They're able to communicate with each other via chemical messages still. So as far as these little cuttings are concerned, as long as they're in the same pot of water together, they kind of think they're the same plant. So as I say, barely science, but somewhat supporting the notion that we set out to test, which was that flowering would suppress the formation of roots in the whole batch, not just in the cutting that's got the flowers. So obviously the thing to take away from this is if you're making cuttings, you should avoid taking cuttings from pieces with flowers on them. Now, what I haven't tested here, and it would be interesting to do that as well, is to take a flowering stem and cut the flowers off it and then see if that still has the same effect. Because sometimes when you take a cutting, you've got no choice but to pick a stem that's got some flowers on it. That's the only thing that's available. And I wonder 
if removing the flowers resets it and allows the roots to form. I suspect it probably does, but there's a subject for another experiment another time. So thanks for joining me on this small and informal experiment. I hope you found that interesting. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.